Hey there, Internet! Welcome to the Hard on Gear channel, where I discuss and review my used and abused knives and gear so that you know what is or isn't worth spending your hard-earned money on. Just shooting a quick video just to give you an update on the next couple of weeks, why I might be a little bit absent on the comments on the YouTube and Instagram and all that stuff. So I'm going for a couple-week trip to another province to do a little bit of that wildfire stuff. Things are pretty hot pretty much everywhere is from the... Uh, well, we'll just say like the entire western part of uh, Canada has basically been on fire the last month or so. That's a bit dramatic, but there's uh, quite a few starts from a lot of lightning and dry weather and heat waves that have been going on the last few weeks. So I'm just going through my gear and get everything sorted to leave tomorrow and, uh, well, trying to pick which knives and gear I'm going to bring along. So just a quick little video talking about that and explaining why I'm leaving some of my new stuff and why I'm going to take some, uh, probably some different stuff that people might not expect. So at first I thought I might be going to British Columbia, which if I did, uh, I like bringing a larger knife like this K-Bar Large Heavy Bowie with me. Makes me feel better in case I were to ever run into a Grizz, which is stupid, but it does make me feel better. Because there are Grizz out there and, you know, probably going to lose that fight a hundred times out of a hundred. But for a little bit of peace of mind and for some nice camp tasks and stuff like that, it does come in handy. Same thing with the K-Bar 1211. Uh, just a little smaller, a little more manageable, but not quite as capable for chopping and cleaving. That's a, kind of a small machete, this large heavy bowie is. But anyways, I'm decided not to bring those just because I, I, we have a weight limit, you know, to fly on airplanes and such. So in order to make that, I've got to kind of watch what I'm bringing and those knives are quite heavy. So forgive my stuffiness, the allergy season is hitting me pretty hard right now. So it's going to make a fun first couple of days hucking some hose and gear through the woods. But uh, yeah, instead of bringing those choppers, I'm going to bring along this uh, F F uh, Fiskers folding saw, which you can get a lot of these, uh, oops, sorry camera, you can get a lot of these cheaper folding saws. This one costs much more than I think 20 bucks or so, but just cheap, easy enough that I can bang it up and replace it if it does get messed up, but it's uh, relatively sturdy compared to some of the other cheaper ones that I've used. We'll find out how good this one holds up because uh, where I'm going, which I believe is a province where uh, we do line camping basically in the woods for two weeks where we have to build our own kitchens and, uh, you know, latrines and all that kind of stuff. So we do quite a bit of chopping down of like dead wood and small uh, spruce and such to build little camps and stuff like that. So little saws like that come in handy, especially if you don't have folders, uh, or, sorry, big fixed blades like that. We'll have axes and chainsaws too, but uh, this kind of stuff comes in handy. Yeah, so for a fixed blade, I'm going to go with one of the Moras. Uh, the sheaths suck, especially for a left-handed person like myself. I'm going to have to draw a reverse grip, but I'm not going to be too concerned about it. I'm also going to have the SE Azula on me, of course. Uh, not exactly sure what I want to do with that if I got my shirt tucked in. If I want the hanging off the front of me and potentially falling off. But I'll bring both sheaths with me and I'm going to play around with that. But I want to have one of these to play around with just uh, in case. You know, just in case I were to happen to lose one of these fixed blades. Two is one, one is none. Uh, I'm probably going to bring the Robust. I just got this at the mail here last week. Didn't do an unboxing because they just come in a plastic bag uh, in with the sheath like this. I'm not actually sure what this little knob is for. What uh, I figured, hell, I could just attach some extra paracord to that. Maybe just wrap that, tie that up or something like that for, I don't know why I would need extra paracord there, but who knows. It does come in handy to have extra cord to John you uh, even just doing pump setups and stuff like that on the fire line. But uh, regardless, I figure this is gonna be a good chance to test this thing out. Extremely robust uh, carbon blade, a little short stubby thing here with a little bit of an extra finger guard. Uh, very good for carving and all that kind of stuff, I'm sure, but it's going to be very good for even do a little bit of batoning and different stuff like that if I have to, which most of the time I'm going to have some better tools and gear around, but it's nice to be able to get away with uh, something like this if somebody else is hogging the chainsaw. Yeah, so take that away because we're going to go with that more companion. Now with the flashlight, I'm just going to uh, probably keep this same old stream light on me and uh, carry that along my person. And then now for a folder. Can't carry one of these on the plane, but uh, I kind of got it narrowed down to, well, pretty much the Mannix 2, the Rat number 1, Model 1, and the CRKT M1603BS. But then I've also got these two little things here now, which I've got in the mail, and uh, I've got the unboxing videos coming up for these. I'm going to have to stagger my videos out a little bit because I'm not as far as ahead as I'd like to be right now as far as uploading uh, videos ahead of time. But I did get the uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2 finally. Black on black. S30V. So I've been thinking about bringing this, but it's so damn new. The edge is still uh, Spyderco sharp. And I don't know if I want to beat that up and get it all gunked up full of fire grit and stuff like that right away. Uh, I do want to beat this thing up and continue to be hard on my knives and test them out to their limits, but oh, it's just so hard to break this one in like that. 
when it's just so smooth. It's my first compression lock. I kind of want to see how this thing breaks in and how well it smooths out over time. And then after the first month or two of babying it, I'll uh, put it to work, much like I did with the Manix 2, which certainly has not been babied. This thing's been beat up pretty well. And now I've also got the Leatherman Signal, which I got in the mail here recently as well, which there's an unboxing video coming up in the next couple weeks for this one as well. It is a super cool uh, multi-tool, which is a little more built for outdoorsy, hiking, camping type stuff. It's got the flint and the little diamond sharpener, and it's got the carabiner, which is nice for hooking on backpacks or belt loops or whatever else you want to hook it on. I do this little clasp here, and then you can even sort of... Uh, Little one open flick it a little bit not super smooth like the oht or the super tools or anything but not a spring loaded plier either but it's very sturdy very capable freaking little leatherman not so little actually this thing probably weighs i think around maybe uh seven or eight ounces but yeah pretty much got everything i need on it got the leatherman pouch for it probably not going to use that because i'm not a big fan of those things lost a few multi tools by ripping those off my belt because i move like the woods through and i move through the woods like an animal rather but the signal, I think, is going to be a pretty cool little tool to try out. I've used that rhyme twice now, and I'm going to test out the hard use capabilities of this thing. Yeah, so going to bring that multi-tool along for sure. Now, for the folder, I'm still kind of like iffy even up to shooting this video. I've used this on fire already this year, and it's actually pretty damn sweet for it. Very low maintenance, easy to clean, uh, light and very rugged uh, the sandvik steel with this thing is pretty damn nice the edge is held phenomenally i haven't touched it up and i've done some pretty rough carving and slicing and chopping through roots and stuff with this and it's uh yeah it's still hair popping sharp so uh, i'm tempted especially for the weight thing and it's pretty much a good all-around knife for the field or i could carry it in my pants or whatever whereas with this thing in my jeans it just sort of pops out quite a bit Quite a big folder, weighs probably at least an ounce or two more than the M16. Paramilitary too, like I said, oh, now for the weight and the capability to this thing, uh, it's very tempting and I really would like to, but I have a feeling if I drop this in the black ground, if I'm, we're looking for hotspots or something, I'm never gonna find this. At least with the satin on the uh, Manix 2, that's gonna shine in the sun quite a bit. Somewhere the sun's gonna hit that, if there, at least if there's some sun or even overcast. But this thing, my goodness, I'll be able to find that no matter what. So, uh, difficult decision here. I don't exactly know what to do. Uh, so we're going to call that out because I'm going to baby that for another month or two. Sorry, Paramilitary 2 fans. You'll see me use and abuse this thing more here shortly. Uh, it's a good opportunity to really test the Manix 2 out now that I've got another Spider Co. And I don't feel quite as obligated to be super careful with this. Huh. The ball bearing lock, I do want to see how that lasts in a more rugged environment. So, you know what? <laughs> this thing's just a little bit bigger, just a, maybe a tad bit heavier, maybe just maybe an ounce or half an ounce heavier. I got to check the weight. That's, I think, five ounces. This uh, may be closer to six. Might be five. I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass right now. But the uh, M16 is probably closer to four, maybe five. A little bit lighter, a little smaller. Just not as capable, and if I'm going to be using it for a long period of time, ugh, it's just not as comfortable in my hand, that's for sure. But you know what? Tried and true military knife, the M16. I mean, people have been using this on deployments and stuff for years, I guess. Budget, pretty damn good, easy flipper, pretty intuitive knife to figure out. Nobody's going to have too much difficulty with this if they're not a knife person. God, I don't know. Okay. You know what? Manix 2. I'm gonna lose this bloody thing though. It's two hundred dollars. Ah, that's the other thing. Two hundred dollars, sixty dollars. If I lose all three of these, that's gonna be like a hundred bucks tops. This one's one hundred and sixty bucks, so I don't want to lose that, obviously. But that's got a lot of purpose. Most multi tools, most most Leathermans of that quality are gonna be about a hundred to one hundred eighty, two hundred dollars. So, ah, all right. Between these two, you're just too damn big at orange for me. I'm sorry. Uh, if I didn't have weight restrictions, I would definitely throw this in and uh, bring one for regular use and one for that. But I know I'm already way over on my weight, so I'm going to, uh, <sighs> you know, and I'll say, tell, tell me down in the comments, <laughs> what are you screaming at the computer screen right now? What do you, what would you be taking? What would you, uh, is there any other gear that you know I have that I think I sh that you think I should be taking over this? Or are there knives right here that you're looking at that you're thinking I'm making a mistake, not bringing, ah, uh, Okay. Already going to have so much shit on me. I'm already bad for losing stuff. I'm going to give the M16 a real go this summer and really give it a try. But on this trip, I'm going to give that Manix 2 a go. It's going to be a dirty camp 
uh, camping export. I'm going to be in the woods pretty much covered in crap and goo and dirt and whatever for a couple weeks. If this ball bearing lock holds up without getting too gunked up and, and not functional, I'll be very impressed. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. So take those there. That is the loadout we're looking at for this wildfire trip. Is that odd compared to what most people would picture? Uh, but really, this is way more fancy than what you're going to see a lot of people carrying. A lot of guys are maybe carrying like a Mora knife or something like that. A lot of guys are just carrying typical traditional sort of uh, buck knives or some of the uh, local uh, D.H. Russell Canadian belt knife stuff from Eastern Canada. But anyways, let me know what you think. I've got some other stuff. I'll put a picture up of uh, my get up that I'm normally wearing when I'm uh, kind of what I've worked up to at least the last few years kind of got a lot of gear just sort of getting used to what I assume uh, infantry life will be which is carrying body armor and a bunch of extra crap off you that you're not used to so you get used to moving around with that stuff after a while and you don't even really notice it's there well you notice it's there you just kind of get used to being annoyed by it so anyways that's it uh, again I'll be I apologize for being a little bit uh, infrequent on my comments and stuff in the next couple of weeks so yeah, keep an eye out for some updated videos and maybe some new clips and stuff after this trip when I get back and uh, have a good rest of your July folks and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. It's the Hard On Gear channel signing off.